everyone. Um, I'm Sarah, hey Dory. Um, as mentioned, uh, we were due to have Nicole Sullivan here, but due to health reasons, she can't fly out to be here with us. Um, I have the honor of filling in her stead. And let's all wish her a huge, um, wish her the best in her recuperation. Thank you. Give her a huge. This conference has a very special place in my heart. And when the organizers asked me to, this early this week to step in, I was really honored. This has been a phenomenal day, um, as I think we can all attest to. Um, and I'd like to, can we all please start with giving a huge, huge, huge round of applause to the wonderful organizers of the conference and all the volunteers that have made this happen over the last few months, please. So this is now the sixth year of CSS Conf EU. Uh, this photo is from uh, 2013, September 13th, the first CSS Conf EU. It was much smaller in terms of venue and numbers of people, but it was the same in essence, bringing people with an interest and curiosity about CSS together in one space, exchanging ideas, learning something new. How did it all begin? Just a few months prior was the first ever um, CSS Conf based in the US. Nicole Sullivan was an organizer with the aim to address the gap in the conference space. There are already conferences the focus there are already uh, the focus on JavaScript or design, and they were great, but they didn't have CSS developers. They didn't have those topics talked about. There was something missing. From there, CSS Comp US was born, and one of the attendees at the event, Krista, came to Berlin and uh, planned to bring that conference to Europe. And just a few months later, the EU was here. Oops. Sorry. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes? yay, woo! Thank you. Great. So, so back in 2013, first ever conference, and, um, and now six years later, uh, six events later, I should say, um, we're here. What have we achieved? Throughout the years, there have been so many fascinating talks, the topics talked about and shared to a wider audience, from new specifications such as CSS grid and variable fonts, to CSS animation, to new developer tools and techniques for writing CSS, such as CSS and JS. There's a wealth of content that's available in the back catalog of conferences and videos online. These videos are now available for developers and would-be developers to watch, learn from, and be inspired. One of my favorite aspects of this conference is the scholarship program for people who otherwise wouldn't be able to attend. Over the years, an amazing 166 people have received scholarships to attend this conference. Um, for many recipients of that scholarship, it's the first time they've been able to take part in the broader developer community. Inspired by this main conference, CSS Classes has been offered in multiple cities, Berlin, Hamburg, Prague, and Sutomi in Amsterdam, a way to introduce people to programming via CSS. Whether you're a beginner or have been programming for years, the ethos of CSS Comp remains the same, to welcome people into web development. It has become a global movement. CSS Comp US, Australia, Norway, Argentina, Asia, and even some upcoming ones in Budapest and Colombia. From the start, CSS Conf EU has had an open call for proposals. This means that anyone, no matter their background or relative experience, could have a shot at being on stage. Two years ago, I gave my very first conference talk on this stage. At that point, I'd only been a developer, a web developer for about a year and a half. I didn't know much about conference speaking or how to write an abstract for a tech event. And when it came to deciding on a talk, and helping refine an abstract, and polishing the talk. 
at every stage, I was able to get support and encouragement from different members of this community. How did I meet those people? It was during breaks during the events, conferences, meetups, um, asking questions on Twitter, sharing my interests to learn, asking for advice. So, keep in touch with the people you have met here today for the first time. If you heard a great community lightning talk, drop them a message afterwards. If there's a speaker who's inspired you to try out something new, share that with them and more widely. The connections you've made and the relationships you've built today will be invaluable. It can be incredibly helpful to hear about people's experiences. I have a challenge for you. What do you have to offer? If you're a web developer, maybe it's a half hour chat talking about what your job is like. That could help a person considering a change in their career have a really clear idea of what opportunities are available to them and how they can achieve their goals. If you're a native English speaker, maybe offer to edit a talk abstract for someone else. If you're brand new to using a tool or a library, sharing your experience about how it was to, to use, that can be great for the maintainers. A fresh perspective. Uh, Rachel Andrew mentioned um, this morning how feedback from you to the CSS working group and values vendors can be really very, uh, useful for the, for the um, development of tech. If you find it stressful talking to people at events, that's fine as well. You can share your advice in blog posts maybe, or maybe briefly in a Twitter Q&A. You have your unique perspective, and being able to share that with others is a wonder. Often, we talk about community of web developers, designers, and more. But what does the CSS community mean here? It could just mean having a common interest. But is it superficially just that we write CSS? Or could it be more than that? What creates that sense of belonging, having that supportive place? My view is that it's something we all have a part in whether we've been in web development for decades or whether we're just starting to explore it right now. Many technical fields have their areas of tension, and CSS isn't an exception. I want to examine some things that I've noticed that aren't working so well, some things that can be jarring, some things that we can reflect on. Over the past couple of years, there's been a swell of argument, pitting two approaches against one another. You're asked to pick a side. Are you with us or against us? It's pretty much as though you're going into battle, right? As though if you should be part of a clique, a group, have a part of your identity supporting one particular way of thinking. On one hand, they're stuck in the past. Using CSS and JS is the future. How can they not see how it solves so many issues? On the other, oh, they can't be bothered to learn how to use the cascade. They're not worth our time. What would it look like if we examined the emotional weight we give these technical implications, implementations and that we chose to act differently? We've been having this argument for years, and it's led to hostility and division. It's time to move on and find a path forward. All tools have their pros and cons. We should be able to listen to each other, respect one another, and move on from there. Another long-standing issue that I'd like to focus on is this. There's this perceived hierarchy where, in the industry, knowledge of CSS isn't often considered as important as JavaScript in the same way that front-end is often not considered as important as back-end work, such as Node. As Ivana McConnell said on the stage two years ago, there's a hierarchy problem. This constructed hierarchy means people who are, CS people who are CSS specialists are often played less than JavaScript specialists. Career progression within organizations are often stunted. A JavaScript specialist can gain a seniority quite quickly. 
um, whereas a CSS specialist often needs to go above and beyond to prove the expertise is just as valuable. What can we do to change this? It will take a concerted effort on behalf of us all. The language you use when talking about expertise in spaces like this, online, in meetups, in offices. It's important to pay attention to this. Note what assumptions you're making or what assumptions you're hearing others make and then act on changing that. It's only by respecting others' expertise as valid can we get rid of these false hierarchies of importance. We're here in this space, listening to talks over in the community lounge, as well as talks on stage. When we leave here, it's not just with a pocket full of stickers and badges, as nice as they are. It's experiences that we take away and that inform us um, how we can step forwards. Inclusion is going out of your way to make a space welcoming to other individuals. It's listening to them ab about what they need and acting on it. In this industry, we talk about inclusive design, ensuring our websites we build are accessible and don't form barriers for people. What about our own tech spaces? Physical spaces like this conference. We have live captions uh, to enable those with hearing impairments to be able to participate in real time with the conference. We have a scholarship scheme that enables this space to be attended by those who otherwise couldn't afford it. But inclusion doesn't just stop at these doors. It's about how we write our open source libraries to welcome people who don't have English as a native language. It's about how we enforce codes of conduct online to ensure there's a clear understanding of expected behavior. It's about ensuring those from marginalized groups aren't excluded. It's about respecting others. Often those of us in the US or Europe center ourselves. In tech, this means often our events are focused here. Every year, people expected as speakers to conferences in Europe and the US are denied visas to speak due to political circumstances. We should be using the privilege that we have to elevate others. It's about being curious, pushing boundaries, learning why things are the way they are, proposing new ways of thinking, communicating with each other across the traditional boundaries of dev, designer, browser, engineer, spec, proposer. Expertise isn't something that necessarily takes years to achieve. Sometimes it can be the new joiner to the field who gives the most insightful critique and pushes the boundaries of what is the received wisdom. This is about inspiring a new generation of web developers and revitalizing the space for those already in the industry. Building community. It starts with a shared interest in a topic, in our case, CSS. But it grows to be so much more than that. It's bringing people together, whether in physical spaces like this one or in digital spaces online. It requires ensuring that there's mutual respect, inclusivity, and a platform for sharing expertise. There are many ways to do this. Take inspiration from this conference and others Talk to people about what they need that isn't being served by current events and online spaces. What is left is for you to come together to build your community. Thank you, CSS Comfy.